Hey guys, how's it going? So today I want to give you kind of an end of winter garden tour. We're still pretty early in the season. Um, too early really to even see hellebores up and looking like their glorious selves. They're just starting to come through the ground right now. It has been a really mild winter, um, so I'm super thankful for that, but it's still getting pretty chilly at night. Like I think tonight is supposed to be 24. Um, so we're still looking at a couple of weeks of those kind of nighttime temperatures, although today it's supposed to get pretty warm. So and it's nice and sunny and still, so it's kind of a great day to do this tour. Um, so I just kind of want to show you what our landscape looks like this time of year um, because it is a pretty big contrast to what it looks like in the summertime. Um, and there are some exciting things to look at, like right here. These are our estate planters. I just put these obelisks in here for the winter time and I packed this whole thing out with bulbs so you can see like in the center here i've got tulips coming up then we've got daffodils coming around the outer portion and then i thought these were crocus did i not plant crocus they look very different than traditional crocus i can't remember it's been too long but the point is they're up and they're looking awesome and i think we're going to have a really beautiful show and russell's going to probably be with us this whole tour now the interesting thing is this container on the other side doesn't get as much sun so you can see that you know there's a pole and a tree there that do cast shade on this pot for longer in the day um so it actually looks looks like it has oh is there Aaron Aaron shadows in this video um it does look like these have caught up a little bit I was looking at them closer the other day and this one looked kind of behind but you can see quite a bit of growth a little bit less on this side where it gets a little bit more shaded but it's exciting and I also wanted to start up here because I really enjoy this view of our garden. I really like it when we drive in and I can see across Versailles. I can see to the gazebo. I feel like the lines are all really nice here. And although I still feel like we have a little bit of work to do with our winter structure in terms of plants, I feel like we're well on our way. Um, and it's just a really pleasant thing to look at. Now, too, um, a lot of our flower beds are buttoned up for the year. Like we have cut back perennials. A lot of them look really, really empty. And this is the time of year that I struggle. Like I wanna to go to the garden center and load the truck full of plants every single day and start planting them in our flower beds. But I just have to remember that most of them have stuff in them. I just have to be patient. And a couple of infrastructure things we are planning on doing this year is um, we're actually this next week, I think, um, going to be moving the pots out just a little bit. And we're going to scrape the gravel away and have a new water line run right by this fence because and I can show you down the way, but we have a, a stub up of water on a post and it falls right in between two of these pots. And we would really like to get rid of that and put a water access on either end on the very, on the very ends. And then we're going to have a little brick pads put underneath each one of these pots to where every single one of them is level to each other and level in and of itself um, so that it's just very tidy looking because these are going to stay out uh, all year round now that they're not you know the self-watering containers were easy to move around these won't be as easy and i'm excited to do something in terms of winter but we wanted a really sturdy firm base on the bottom of each one of these so they don't heave and stuff with the freeze thaw and all of that business but i'm really enjoying the way they look and these containers that I planted up in the fall, they're looking pretty nice. We've got the blue spruce, but we've also got some gorgeous hellebores in here I wanted to show you. I can't remember the names of these. It's evading me at the moment. But they are just looking amazing. And you can see new fresh ones coming up right here. The ivy is a little bit, a little bit winter weary, as is the cabbage, but they still, they held up really well. Uh, because even in a more mild winter, those don't tend to look amazing after the winter months. Oh, we do have some tulips coming up. Also, our grass is pretty nice. Like there, the big patch over here looks a little less green, but it usually gets a lot more brown than this during the winter time. So I've really enjoyed coming out here and seeing something that looks nice and fresh and green. Um, the Cafe Noir tulips are coming up. Aaron and I were noticing though, we came out here earlier today and we were noticing last year we had some water run to this section right here. Um, so they're not coming up as thick right here, but you can also see the shade and you can see how much of a role that plays in the growth rate of things that like the sun. So the tulips on this side are clearly much further along than the tulips that are just starting to pop out of the soil on the other side. 
So it's all stuff we kind of learn throughout the year and when you want to do, or throughout the years, when you want to do something more balanced and use the same planting in all the whole area, you really do need to look for things that can handle both sun and shade when you're dealing with stuff behind hedges. Russell. So moving this direction, you can see we still have the pavers out here as our border, which is not something that I want to keep here. I don't know that it's going to make the cut for 2020 garden projects though, because we have a lot of other things going on and they work for right now. Um, the reason why we keep them is because they keep the gravel away from the mulch and vice versa. Um, they keep a nice distinct line so that everything stays clean. So they're doing their job. And even though they're not like perfectly straight or, you know, what I want in the end, I, I'll probably want to do brick right here like we did on the driveway on the west side. They're st they work. Also, we cut our boxwoods in, well, when was it? It must have been the beginning of October. It was very mild out and beautiful. It was perfect trimming weather. And then we had our coldest night of the entire winter happened in October. It went from like 40 degrees down to nine degrees and it just burned the life out of the top of my boxwoods, which you know what, it just happens. This kind of stuff happens. I'm gonna let them flush out this spring. I might try to kind of selectively trim out some of the uh, winter burned part. Um, but I just wanted to show you that because sometimes you can do everything on the right schedule and when you think it needs to be done. And sometimes this stuff still happens. And it's just the way it goes and you have to be okay and roll with those kinds of things. This got it the worst. It's kind of weird. I think that this is probably the most exposed section of boxwood hedging. Like even the other side looks a lot better, but it's much more protected by a locust and a, and a big spruce tree. You can see over there that there's a lot more stuff going on that's kind of over the top of those boxwoods, kind of helping keep them a little bit more protected. But this is an area we came in Boy, when was that? January or was it December? I can't even remember. Um, but I was able to come in and clean up the grass edge. So I need to come in with some mulch at some point and freshen this up. Um, but you can see the tulips. You can see the growth rate right now. I mean, it's, they're already growing like crazy. You might remember when I came out here in a video and I mulched over the top of them when it was a lot earlier and they were already pushing growth. Um, but I'm really encouraged by the tulips that are coming back up because these are not ones I planted this last fall. I planted them fall before last. So this will be their second spring blooming in our garden. And you know, some varieties of tulips in our area were zone five, six. I don't know what to call us anymore. I think um, the 10 year average is now pulling us up into a six, which is great. I'm not going to complain about that. Um, but typically we'll have some varieties of tulips that will come back really faithfully and wonderfully and they'll naturalize and spread a little bit and some aren't quite as good. And sometimes you don't know when you put them in the ground what they're gonna do. And so far I've been so pleased with the, how all of the tulips that we've put in have come back. And this is the white cubed blend from Color Blends. And I did wanna point out, because I don't think I've ever really talked about this organ grape back here, but it's kind of filled in this area and in season it's in pretty deep shade right here and it does so well and it's got its beautiful red winter color and then it just um, kind of uh, lightens up to a nice medium shiny green in season it's a really beautiful plant and then this is a snowball bush right here which i think is going to start flourishing even more because the oaks are gone and you can see we haven't done anything here yet i honestly don't have any really big solid plants for this area other than we are going to be lining this area with brick like we did on the west side and that's going to hopefully happen in the next few weeks so we'll have a nice clean edge here um, and very distinct like we're actually going to bring the flower bed out a couple of feet because it doesn't need to be this wide um, and so we'll have a little bit more space to plant in and i will put probably three or four shade trees in here i'm thinking probably one two three in this section and then another one right behind the chicken coop to kind of replace what the elm was doing where the elm was <laughs> and anyway i do hope i can find some large trees large scale trees for that pro this project and in other areas like we do want to put some other trees in and i probably won't put giant trees but this is an area i think we would appreciate spending a little bit more money a little bit more of this year's budget to buy something that's a little bit larger especially by the chicken coop because we won't have shade there this summer it's going to be a little bit touch and go with the chickens i'm planning on doing 
shade cloth and whatever I can to help them stay cool. Um, but I think a tree, if I can get a nice sizable one, will help out a whole lot. In the back area here, we did have the fence repaired. I think I might have showed you that in our snow tour this winter. Um, this is where the elm tree fell and it broke this fence and we had toyed with the idea of taking it out altogether and I think we will eventually. Um, but for now, this was the cheaper solution was just to fix the fence up. Um, and then we do have plans for the back formal garden and it's something we might get to this year maybe toward fall, but it's definitely not on the spring list. Um, and so we want to do some really fun garden things back here that can handle full sun because this whole section right here isn't really shaded all that much. I mean, like this corner, you can see at the very end of the day gets a little bit of shade, um, but for the most part, it gets a lot of sun. So we were thinking maybe roses or something like that would be really fun in this space. Um, but we're not 100% sure. I've done some sketches, um, but they're pretty loose at this moment. Okay, so as we head this direction, um, kind of the back of the chicken coop area, I realized middle of the winter that I forgot to drain this fountain. I forgot to pull the plug on it. So I have water in there. The pump might not work this spring, but we'll fire. I actually am planning on firing up all of the fountains in the next week or two. Um, because I think that they'll be fine uh, if we get them going. And you can see the tulips in here, they're starting to come up. What was this, the Penitage blend? Beautiful. And you can't really distinguish between, well, I, I have a hard time distinguishing even between mulch and tulips and plants at this point. Um, but this area is looking pretty nice. And I wanted to point out that the pallet walkway, this is year, what did we decide, Erin? It's year two or three with this pallet walkway. This is the original. We haven't replaced anything and they're still doing really well. Um, and so that was one of the things I, I said in the project was because a lot of people were like, oh, this would rot or it would, you know, termites or whatever would take it, you know, the first year it would last like a month in my area. But here is so dry. It's so, so dry here that we can get away with putting wood right down on mulch and it doesn't hurt it at all. Um, I wasn't actually even expecting to get three years out of it and it was a short term solution for us but I kind of like it now. And it's something that it's kind of whimsical to me. It's something I'll probably keep around even if I do have to replace boards here and there. Um, I've got some euphorbia that looks really good and I planted this in a video. So I think I, ha I can look up the name of this one, but look at the color. I don't know if you can see the variegation on that. It's beautiful, yellow, green. And then you can see the stems are really beautiful red. I need to cut it back probably and let it grow back fresh. But the tag said zone six and they've survived. So anyway, that's, that's really nice. That's something I might repeat. I've had several questions about how our Pixie Miniature Peach is doing and it's just still sitting here in its container. It's looking great, lots of flexibility in the branches. I can see where some of the areas are starting to swell a little bit. Had great production on this little tree last year, like super, super great production. Um, in fact, so good that I probably should have thinned the fruit because they ended up being about this big instead of they will get normal size, like great big peaches, um, but you do have to thin them so that they have room to get that big and so that the plant can send enough energy to make them that big. Um, so that's something I'll probably do this year, but I was really happy with that plant. And the ornamental cabbages has stayed pretty nice throughout the winter time. And then everything like in front of the chicken coop, it was really full last year. And I do have a number of things planted in here. There's the Zephyrine Druin climbing roses that bloom pink there. Oh, there's tulips in here. I forgot. Whew. I'm so excited for this spring because we planted so many bulbs this last year that I really, I should watch that video back <laughs> so I can rem remember where everything's at because I keep like uh, stumbling upon little groupings of bulbs. And then I remember, oh yeah, we planted them this last fall. I've got a buddleia in here. This is a Miss Violet, so it blooms purple. So we've got pink rose, the purple buddleia. These are a peachy colored rose. This is a peachy cream, oh so easy peachy cream. Um, so we've got the beautiful trio of color. Uh, the Weeping Colorado Blue Spruce, which will grow probably up to about the height of the uh, uh, roof there. And then I'll keep it pruned fairly narrow and they grow pretty slow. So I thought it would be a good option for an evergreen right here. And then I've got Indiglo Girl Salvia, but everything else other than the tulips, I mean, it's pretty open in here. So we have a lot of opportunity for some new plants I'm really excited about. I do have some yellow echinaceas in there too, I think. So let's move this direction. 
I've got some firelight hydrangeas I planted in here last year, and I've got some fun plans for annuals in this brick circle area. Um, I think it's gonna be fun to have some anchor shrubs in here. I've really enjoyed seeing some structure out here. I mean, even though it's just branches, it's still, it's something to look at rather than it just being completely bare. Um, so that makes me excited. I did want to run by this area where we just mulched uh, because I wanted to show you kind of an update of what it looks like. I mean, in the shade, it still looks pretty dark. So we'll move over here where you can see it has it has grayed out quite a bit. I mean, I don't know if you can call that gray. It's still brown, but it's definitely not as rich as it looked when we very first put it down because when we put it down, it was kind of moist. Um, so of course it looks really like dark and beautiful, but I am really happy with this still. It's so much better. I don't know if you can see the difference between this and then the mulch that's underneath Hebe over there. That was the other stuff we were using. And while it's still nice, it still has that red tint to it that I do not like. I do not like a red tint in my mulch really at all. Um, and while that was a really good solution because it's like a natural product and um, it, you know, whatever, I, I still think that this is a really good option for us here. So it's something we'll probably keep on doing. I think it's gonna be really good for our plants. You can see the Purissima Blonde tulips are coming up. This is exciting to me because my parents have these in their garden and they their, their uh, leaves almost look like an autumn frost hosta. They're really bold. They're like a lot wider than a lot of other tulips that I'm aware of. Um, and they've got that really beautiful yellow, bright yellow variegation and then clear white tulips. And I've got little bunches of them coming up all over in here. So excited. I think it's gonna look really pretty against this. Still toying, toying with what to do with this gazebo. Um, you know, because I don't, I don't let, I, I love having the gazebo out here, but I don't love the color. It looks very orange, everything looks orange to me. So I thought about staining or painting the concrete more of a charcoal color and then doing, I don't know if I would want the gazebo white though, because I feel like I love looking across Versailles and the fact that this, even though it's not my favorite color, it still recedes into the background a little bit. It doesn't jump out at you. And I feel like if it was white, it would jump a little bit too much. So I've been toying with like a dove gray or one of those really pretty gray green colors um, that you see. Honestly, I can't even remember where I saw it, but it's back in the back of my brain. Um, but it's a beautiful color and something that, you know, I don't know, we may end up doing. I'm not one to haul off and do stuff super fast though. If Aaron had his way, Aaron, you would change all the things all at once. And I'm much more of a slow mover. I like to think about things for a while, maybe too long sometimes because I, I want to make the right decision. I don't want to have to paint it again if I don't like it the first time. So uh, anyway, there's some exciting new uh, tulips coming up over here. I love these moss planters. It was something I was just trying out. I don't know if you guys remember the vlog where I put these together and they have um, kind of mellowed out in color quite a bit. They faded from the sun, but still, I just think that they've been really kind of a peaceful thing. I really have liked it as opposed to putting branches and stuff, which is what I did the year before. Uh, right up here, if we walk down this sidewalk, you can see these are the Vidal, Vidal tulips that we planted year before last, and they're coming up like crazy. Like I think that these are the ones that are the biggest on our property and these will be a mixture. I think it's five different whites. There's a really um, like frilly edged white one. There's a double, there's just a clear white one. There's a white one with a green stripe. It's just a beautiful, beautiful blend. So I'm really excited to see these blooming again. And you can see like for those of you who have watched our tours or have followed our videos, like the stark difference, like stark contrast between in season and out of season. Um, and this bed, I'm pretty happy with, you know, because the boxes are still really young and I'm hoping that they, I want them to be up about like this tall in the end. Um, so things are just, they just need time to mature. And so I have to be patient, um, but I am pretty happy with, you know, the way the lilac looks now, there's a viburnum that's evergreen there. Um, and then just a few evergreens just popped here and there. And then this bed will completely fill in with perennial bulbs first and then perennials as the season goes. In fact, right here, I mean, this whole area is so full of anemones and they almost shroud the fence section back there. Like you can almost not see that toward the end of the season. It's pretty crazy the difference 
uh, the different stages our gardens go through. This is my favorite boxwood hedge on the entire property because it's the one that's the most protected so it never really gets hit by anything like the other areas are so exposed that they tend to get like dead spots and winter burn and all kinds of stuff and this one's just like this perfect little beautiful hedge i love it the rest of this area is a complete mess <laughs> this is going going to be worked on probably in two weeks the pathway will start going in and so i'm really excited to show you guys the whole process we've got some sprinklers right here there's sprinklers all along this whole walkway area this was grass that we're going to have to dig up and cap and then the pathway will go in and then we can start filling in this year and i may i don't really have solid plant plans for this area other than i'll probably toss some annuals in here just to take up some space so i have some time to think about what i want in here permanently um, but other than that i've got the limetta hydrangea standard i don't know why i said standard limetta hydrangea hedge right here and then we've got the sprinter boxwoods there and then i just wanted to pop out to the west side over here because this is another area I really enjoy. And while everything is still really young because this was brand new this last spring, I just love the structure out here. It makes me happy when we drive by it. I can see, you know, I can see what the idea and the plan is for this area and it should just get better from here. You know, we'll start really filling in, filling in this space this year. I mean, both sides. And we've got 200 white tulips planted around each one of these maple trees that will come up this spring. And I'm looking forward to seeing that. And I'm really quite pleased with how these sprinters look because of that nine degree night and how bad some of my other boxwoods took it. These did really well and these are 100% exposed. And I mean, I'm just, I'm a believer in the sprinters. The other ones I showed you up front were winter gems. And these sprinters are an improved version of those winter gems. And you can really tell that they are, they're able to handle a lot more. So anyway, I think that's where we're gonna end this tour. Everything is pretty much, it kind of has the same look right now, to be honest. There's not a ton going on yet. So I'm hoping the next tour, you're gonna be able to see just a ton of life and a ton of may hopefully blooms, um, but we have a lot to do between that time and uh, that tour. So we will be showing you all of these new projects going in this spring. I'm super excited about it. Thank you guys so much for watching this tour video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.